Dutch Fairy Tales for Young Folks by William Elliot Griffiths The Boy Who Wanted More Cheese Klaus von Bommel was a Dutch boy, twelve years old, who lived where cows were plentiful. He was over five feet high, weighed a hundred pounds, and had rosy cheeks. His appetite was always good, and his mother declared his stomach had no bottom. His hair was a color halfway between a carrot and a sweet potato. It was as thick as reeds in a swamp and was cut level from under one ear to another. Klaus stood in a pair of timber shoes that made an awful rattle when he ran fast to catch a rabbit, or scuffed slowly along to school over the brick road of his village. In summer, Klaus was dressed in a rough blue linen blouse. In winter, he wore woolen breeches as wide as coffee bags. They were called bell trousers and in shape were like a couple of cowbells turned upwards. These were buttoned on to a thick, warm jacket. Until he was five years old, Klaus was dressed like his sisters. Then, on his birthday, he had boys' clothes, with two pockets in them of which he was proud enough. Klaus was a farmer's boy. He had rye bread and fresh milk for breakfast. At dinner time, beside cheese and bread, he was given a plate heaped with boiled potatoes. Into these, he first plunged a fork and then dipped each round white ball into a bowl of hot melted butter. Very quickly then did potato and butter disappear down the red lane. At supper he had bread and skim milk left after the cream had been taken off with a saucer to make butter. Twice a week the children enjoyed a bowl of bonnie clabber or curds with a little brown sugar sprinkled on the top. But at every meal there was cheese, usually in thin slices which the boy thought not thick enough. When Klaus went to bed, he usually fell asleep as soon as his shock of yellow hair touched the pillow. In summertime, he slept till the birds began to sing at dawn. In winter, when the bed felt warm and Jack Frost was lively, he often heard the cows talking in their way before he jumped out of his bag of straw which served for a mattress. The Van Bommels were not rich, but everything was shining clean. There was always plenty to eat at the Van Bommels' house. Stacks of rye bread, a yard long and thicker than a man's arm, stood on end in the corner of the cool, stone-lined basement. The loaves of dough were put in the oven once a week. Baking time was a great event at the Van Bommels, and no menfolk were allowed in the kitchen on that day unless they were called in to help. As for the milk pails and pans, filled or emptied, scrubbed or set in the sun every day to dry, and the cheeses piled up in the pantry, they seemed sometimes enough to feed a small army. But Klaus always wanted more cheese. In other ways, he was a good boy, obedient at home, always ready to work on the cow farm and diligent in school. But at the table, he never had enough. Sometimes his father laughed and asked him if he had a well or a cave under his jacket. Klaus had three younger sisters, Trentia, Annika, and Sarcha which is Dutch for Kate, Annie, and Sally. These, their fond mother who loved them dearly, called her orange blossoms. But when at dinner, Klaus would keep on dipping his potatoes into the hot butter while others were all through. His mother would laugh and call him her buttercup. But always, Klaus wanted more cheese. When unusually greedy, she twitted him as a boy worse than butter and eggs. That is, as troublesome as the yellow and white plant called toadflex is to the farmer. Very pretty, but nothing but a weed. One summer's evening, after a good scolding, which he deserved well, Klaus moped and, almost crying, went to bed in bad humor. He had teased each one of his sisters to give him a bit of cheese, and this added to his own slice made his stomach feel as heavy as lead. Klaus's bed was up in the garret. When the house was first built, one of the red tiles of the roof had been taken out and another one made of glass was put in its place. In the morning this gave the boy light to put on his clothes. At night, in fair weather, it supplied air to his room. A gentle breeze was blowing from the pine woods on the sandy slope not far away. So Klaus climbed up on the stool to sniff the sweet piney odors. He thought he saw lights dancing under the tree. One beam seemed to approach his roof hole and coming nearer played round the chimney. Then it passed to and fro in front of him. It seemed to whisper in his ear as it moved by. 
It looked very much as if a hundred fireflies had united their cold light into one lamp. Then Kloss thought that the strange beams bore the shape of a lovely girl, but he only laughed at himself at the idea. Pretty soon, however, he thought the whisper became a voice. Again, he laughed so heartily that he forgot his moping and the scolding his mother had given him. In fact, his eyes twinkled with delight when the voice gave this invitation. There's plenty of cheese, come with us. To make sure of it, the sleepy boy now rubbed his eyes and cocked his ears. Again, the light bearer spoke to him. Come. Could it be? He had heard old people tell of the ladies of the wood that whispered and warned travelers. In fact, he himself had often seen the fairies ring in the pine woods. To this, the flame lady was inviting him. Again and again, the moving cold light circled round the red tile roof, which the moon then rising and peeping over the chimneys seemed to turn into silver plates. As the disk rose higher in the sky, he could hardly see the moving light that had looked like a lady, but the voice no longer a whisper as at first was now even plainer. There's plenty of cheese. Come with us. I'll see what it is anyhow, said Kloss, as he drew on his thick woolen stockings and prepared to go downstairs and out without waking a soul. At the door he stepped into his wooden shoes. Just then the cat purred and rubbed up against his shins. He jumped for he was scared, but looking down for a moment he saw the two balls of yellow fire in her head and knew what they were. Then he sped to the pine woods and towards the fairy ring. What an odd sight. At first, Kloss thought it was a circle of big fireflies. Then he saw clearly that there were dozens of pretty creatures, hardly as large as dolls, but as lively as crickets. They were full of light as if lamps had wings. Hand in hand, they flitted and danced around the ring of grass as if this was fun. Hardly had Kloss got over his first surprise than of a sudden he felt himself surrounded by the fairies. Some of the strongest among them had left the main party in the circle and come to him. He felt himself pulled by their dainty fingers. One of them, the loveliest of all, whispered in his ear, Come, you must dance with us. Then a dozen of the pretty creatures murmured in chorus, Plenty of cheese here, plenty of cheese here, come, come. Upon this, the heels of Kloss seemed as light as a feather. In a moment, with both hands clasped in those of the fairies, he was dancing in high glee. It was as much fun as if he were at the Kermis, with a row of boys and girls hand in hand, swinging along the streets, as Dutch maids and youth do during Kermis week. Kloss had not time to look hard at the fairies, for he was too full of the fun. He danced and danced all night and until the sky in the east began to turn first gray and then rosy. Then he tumbled down, tired out, and fell asleep. His head lay on the inner curve of the fairy ring, with his feet in the center. Kloss felt very happy, for he had no sense of being tired, and he did not know he was asleep. He thought his fairy partners who had danced with him were now waiting on him to bring him cheeses. With a golden knife they sliced them off and fed him out of their own hands. How good it tasted! He thought now he could and would eat all the cheese he had longed for all his life. There was no mother to scold him or daddy to shake his finger at him. How delightful! But by and by he wanted to stop eating and rest a while. His jaws were tired. His stomach seemed to be loaded with cannonballs. He gasped for breath. But the fairies would not let him stop, for Dutch fairies never get tired. Flying out of the sky from the north, south, east, and west they came bringing cheeses. These they dropped down around him until the piles of the round masses threatened first to enclose him as with a wall, and then to overtop him. There were the red balls from Edom, the pink and yellow spheres from Gouda, and the grey loaf-shaped ones from Leiden. Down through the vista of sand in the pine woods he looked and oh horrors. There were the tallest and strongest of the fairies rolling along the huge round flat cheeses from Friesland. Any one of these was as big as a cartwheel and would feed a regiment. The fairies trundled the heavy discs along as if they were playing with hoops. 
They shouted hilariously as with a pine stick they beat them forward like boys at play. Farm cheeses, factory cheeses, Alkmaar cheese, and to crown all, cheese from Limburg, which Klaus could never bear because of its strong odor. Soon the cakes and balls were heaped so high around him that the boy as he looked up felt like a frog in a well. He groaned when he thought the high cheese walls were tottering to fall on him. Then he screamed, but the fairies thought he was making music. They, not being human, do not know how a boy feels. At last, with a thick slice in one hand and a big hunk in the other, he could eat no more cheese. Though the fairies, led by their queen standing on one side or hovering over his head, still urged him to take more. At this moment, while afraid that he would burst, Klaus saw the pile of cheeses as big as a house topple over. The heavy mass fell inward upon him. With a scream of terror, he thought himself crushed as flat as a Friesland cheese. But he wasn't. Waking up and rubbing his eyes, he saw the red sun rising on the sand dunes. Birds were singing and the cocks were crowing all around him in chorus, as if saluting him. Just then, also, the village clock chimed out the hour. He felt his clothes. They were wet with dew. He sat up to look around. There were no fairies, but in his mouth was a bunch of grass, which he had been chewing lustily. Klaus never would tell the story of his night with the fairies, nor has he yet settled the question whether they left him because the cheese house of his dream had fallen, or because daylight had come. End of The Boy Who Wanted More Cheese